Merry Christmas, everyone! We put forward four topics, four festive topics, and the other one was, again, mine. Clearly, best prompter of the team. The one that's come up is, what is the strangest thing that you have heard considered a crime against Christmas? And if people don't understand what we're getting at here, we've actually got something to open up with, which we, obviously we're all going to have experienced. Um, to get us to get us set off, to get us knowing the kind of things we're looking for. And this is to do with Christmas dinners. Yeah, I'd assumed that each of us would have a variation of like, well, somebody told me or someone in the family or something has kicked off because X isn't in the Christmas dinner this year. Yeah, or X is in the Christmas dinner and it's not Christmassy. Let's come up with like, what is, you know, necessary for the Christmas dinner and like what other bits have been like called out for being like not belonging. Okay, I guess we can all start with then, like, the the protein. Whatever it happens to be, whether you have turkey. That's the first debate, isn't it? Yeah. I just thought it was, like, it was only built around a protein. Well, turkey is normally assumed, at least in the UK, as being, like, the main thing you would have. But then I know my, my I've had beef before, and I've, I've had gammon, and I've had people say, how can you not be having turkey? I think having dark meat. So beef is to set too far. If you're having gammon or ham or See, something like that, you're, that's you're, fine. you're introducing a line though. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like we didn't do turkey generally. We did chicken plus other meat. So like it would be chicken and ham or chicken and beef. Oh, we just do chicken. Like every, I think that's all we've ever had. I think we might have had turkey once or twice, but I just thought it's a bit dry. Chicken's fine. Chicken's cheaper as well. <laughs> that's the thing. Is like chicken's cheaper and easier to do well. Like. Turkey's so easy to mess up. It is, and if you want to get fancy, you have a capon, which is what my mum gets, which is a castrated domestic cock, fattened for eating. See, I was <laughs> which is like, a sentence I love saying. I genuinely a thought domestic you were like cock. I I genuinely thought you were saying if you're fancy, you cook with a cape on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> super, super just yes. no, okay. around. <laughs> Capon's just like super chicken, basically. It's just like right. chicken that costs a little bit more, and it's just a super chicken. Yeah, super chicken with a cape, chicken with a cape on. I guess a good way to think about this would be if you were served it, would you think it's not part of a Christmas dinner? So if I pushed the plate in front of you, Carl, and it was beef, would your mind be like, well, this isn't Christmassy? Well, it's not Christmas dinner, no. There you go. So like, there are there are lines. If it was just beef, I would say that's not a very traditional Christmas dinner. It's just, just beef and nothing else. So Just a plate of beef. <laughs> just plate <laughs> just of nothing beef. else. Exactly. Just half a cow. I think um, another one would be... Uh, like the potatoes. So for me, like roast potatoes, usually goose fat potatoes are the ones that we would cook. But I know a lot of people like mashed potatoes or tater tots or that kind of thing. I know goose fat is like a traditional thing, but like a lot of people in my family, extended family, are veggie. So we've always just had roasties in general. It's not specifically like goose fat ones. But so yeah. let's just rename Christmas what it actually should be called. They're just like the bird annihilator meal. <laughs> <laughs> like the amount of birds that have to die to make Christmas dinner. Because you're like, my mom ate turkey with chicken gravy and goose fat. And it's like, how many birds had to die? <laughs> Does anybody think that you shouldn't have mashed potatoes? I don't I don't think that they are expected part of ro uh, like a Christmas roast dinner, no. I do think a potato is necessary, though, whether it be mash or roast. But no, no, no. If you come at me and you give me mash on a plate and not roasties, I am I will oh, so consider you're, that you're a like, crime. If you're going to make mash, you better do roasties as well. Yes. And I have done, I, like, the last couple of times i've cooked christmas dinner i have done both so like you know set people's expectations but you can't give me match and not roast okay i always think it's like one or the other it's like as long as you do one potato dish and, and we can all agree pigs and blankets have to be there on christmas dinner yeah specifically christmas is when i would expect pigs and blankets yeah that's the only time i eat them yeah pigs and blankets i just want to clarify for any americans are not what you're thinking because they're like sausage rolls or something for them right that's what they sometimes call a sausage roll, yeah. It's um, like a small chip of sausage wrapped in bacon. It's pig wrapped in pig. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, like, just Christmas dinner, just so many animals have to die for deliciousness. Can I be, like, controversial and say I'm not really that fussed with pigs in blankets? Like, people are just, they obsess over them, and I'm just like... Yeah, like, Joe, when you go to, like, a Sunday carvery, and they'll say you can have two pigs in blankets, and you get that old man who's like, well, what more than that? So I guess the other two definite staples... I, I actually, it depends whether you count things like carrot and turnip as being a definite staple. You need at least two root vegetables. That can include potatoes, but you need at least another root vegetable, whether that be parsnip, whether that be swede, whether that be carrot. That'd be so sad if you only had one other veg on top of your potatoes. Yeah, I mean, one other root vegetable. Honey roasted. Okay, parsnip. right. Mm, so you need at least yes. two... 
the root vegetables would be like your swede, your carrots, your um, turnips, your potatoes. But then on top of that, then you need something that's a bit lighter. I'd say at least one stem vegetable. So that'd be a cauliflower or a broccoli. Not both, that's too much. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Carl's got a lot more rules than we were expecting. It's more about it's efficiency. Because no one's eating the vegetables on their plate. But you need them there so you're not just eating chicken and Excuse fat. Excuse me. Meat and I love potatoes. my honey roasted yeah. parsnips. I love yeah, my like... carrot and turnip with a bit of butter and a bit of salt. Can't be that. Carrot and Swede mash is god tier. I'll say that. Carrot and Swede mash is like top tier. I, I, I would say carrot and Swede mash is like how I'd expect the other root vegetable rule to be implemented. Sprouts, I'd say in some form, I've got to be on the plate. You, you've got to have sprouts because it's Christmas. You can do sprouts nicely. You can. No one's more make sprouts nice. Also, no one really likes sprouts. Come on, I let's do. be honest here. No, no one I really, I really refuse them. likes them. They were always my favourite. They were my favourite veg. And then you got your gravy. Does anybody have a specific kind of gravy that you think you have to have? Uh, it has to be made with the stock of whatever meat you're eating. I think, I think my mum uses red wine, maybe? I'd have to check with her. But I think. Yeah, I put a splash of red wine in my chicken stock gravy. Again... A lot of my family were veggies, so there's like multiple gravies going on. There's a lot of boats. It's, it's like it's like the landing of Normandy at Lucas's table. There's always gravy boats coming in. You know, you put in all of like the condiments you have on the table. Like you put in a bit of like the apple sauce, a bit of cranberry, um, like a bit of red wine. Like in you mix it into your gravy. You can make it really nice, honestly. No, that feels like a thing that you should be doing when you put it on your plate. If I got served gravy that had, like, applesauce in it, I'd be like, did you spill applesauce in my gravy? There's so little amount of applesauce that you don't even know it's in there unless I told you it was in there. So why put it in? Because you can <laughs> tell the <laughs> Because it's Christmas, tape. Lucas. Like, because, because it's, it's Christmas. Christmas. Because I'll say you're making nice gravy. It's like you put extra flavours in there, Carl. You put complementary flavours that you're also having on your plate. So the purpose of this discussion isn't necessarily to nail down what we have for Christmas dinner. It's more just to bring up the idea that there are things that people consider to be Christmassy and non-Christmassy when it comes to not just food, but about the entire thing of Christmas. It's like, these are the things that are in mind as like the crimes, the things where somebody would have a go at you and might even get genuinely annoyed if something is either done or not done. So I'm going to start the discussion off just with a small one from my own family. And uh, this involves a Christmas chocolate tin. So uh, ever since I've been very young, we've always had a Rose's chocolate tin. And it's one of the original ones. It's like massive. Like you see them nowadays and they're small and they're made of plastic. This is one of the older ones. It's like the size of three of the previous ones. This Rose's tin, we've had it for basically our entire childhood. And up until recently, um, well, it is still, but up until recently, it was being used as the primary chocolate tin. So every year, my mum would buy loads of chocolates. She'd get roses, but she'd also get celebrations. She'd get Quality Street. She'd put it all into the one big tin. A few years ago, my mum suggested replacing this old tin that we'd had for years with a really nicely made festive Christmas box. And my little sister, when I rate, went ballistic about this because according to her, it's not Christmas if you don't have the Christmas roses tin. Here's the thing as well, like, Roses are just for people who don't like, like, Quality Street's the champion. <laughs> no, no, Celebrations are the champion. No, Celebrations feel like they came in too late. Celebrations feels like Channel 5. <laughs> See, like, it came in too late. It's not traditional. Because you can get a fucking Mars bar any time of the year. You can't get a praline triangle any time but Christmas. That's why <laughs> yeah, Quality Street is the king. No one wants a praline triangle. That's why, Carl. Nobody wants Lucas, any of your right? strawberry creams. No, and your I have researched this. Calls. Right? <laughs> Every single year, Cadbury's get letters from people of like, my quality street didn't have enough praline triangles in it. Is the lesson it this year? Turns out the they have literally never changed the um the amount. The ratio. They've only yeah. ever changed like, you know, the amount you actually get, but the ratio, as you said, of all the different chocolates has always been the same. And every year someone's like, there's less praline triangles. There's, like, too, no, many there's, toffee, less to there's too many toffee coins. Toffee no, toffee pennies are great with a cup of tea. Yeah, anyway, well, like, I think <laughs> So this the is where the with... argument's coming, though. Yeah. I know, like, I'm going to have to keep raining things... this in all the way through. <laughs> if you took one of those out, I guarantee you somebody pissed off. The only one that no one wants is the plain chocolate one, because you get enough of that. It's boring. It, I think the other thing is, as well, the fact that they've got a toffee finger and a toffee penny. I love the toffee finger. That's my favourite. But, like, get rid of one. You don't need two solid pieces of toffee. You don't. I also feel like it's going to pull your teeth out as well. It's also. always It always got me, because like, you get like a box of heroes and there's like one fudge in there, and you're like, for fuck's sake! Miniature heroes can fuck off as well. 
heroes have like absolutely gone to shit nowadays. They've removed half the good ones. The only good thing about celebrations <laughs> is the Maltesers ones that taste amazing. Anyway. On, so, yeah. so I don't that's... care. Like, you, you eat roses. <laughs> roses aren't Christmas. It's quality street or nothing. So if it's you... the little foil. Ah. It's just the foil and you fold it up and put it in your pocket. <laughs> Which of like the the Christmas snacks then do you consider to be the one for you then? Because for me it's Twiglets. Because at no other point of the year do I eat Twiglets. They're Halloween foods for us because we used to put them. No, Christmas. No, no, they're for us they're Halloween foods because they look like bones. So we'd always have them on the table as bones in the in the Halloween meal. I eat Twiglets all year round, but I will agree with Carl. They are Christmas treats because like they come out in like those big. Twi massive mega Christmas packs of Twiglets every year. Like they don't do it for Halloween, Brad. The most the most festive snack that, uh, from our family history, I would say, is probably chocolate fingers, or as my uh, little sister called them, finger legs, and I don't know why. Finger. But yeah, <laughs> chocolate sure those matchsticks, right? The chocolate matchsticks. The matchsticks are also as well, or or a white chocolate orange, specifically the white ones. They only come out at Christmas. We always get a Terry's chocolate orange. Mm. Like that's, that's one of the presents we get. Off my stepdad is a Terry's chocolate orange, and that is the only time I eat it. That is like there's there's like that category, isn't there, of the chocolates that you only see at Christmas? Of there's the the celebrations, the quality streets, the roses. There's a uh, matchmakers, uh, Terry's chocolate orange, Ferrero Rocher's. Yeah, really like one. Mm. Or, or Raffelli, like the, the coconut variants of those. Oh, ooh, mm. yeah. And it's like, Do you know what thing yeah. I love at Christmas though, and it's you only see it at Christmas, and no one ever really gets them. It is that like the desiccated fruit that's like joe it's like the lemons and limes that are like dried and then covered in sugar i don't even think i know what carl's talking about you ever seen like crystallized fruit where it's like because dry, yeah. like, dried fruit is a thing isn't it at christmas oh it says here like they're mostly used for baking but i used to get given them as just like a treat at christmas by my <laughs> grandma who baked so now it's in my head i'm now starting to put together oh she just gave me like the dried fruit she had <laughs> in the cupboard and said it was a christmas thing she gave you the leftovers and was like the special christmas treats girl yeah it's like the other one's marzipan as well here they are what are these called oh but it's someone saying like what are they <laughs> Nobody knows. It's like it's a picture of them. This and so, mystery. And yeah, it's like fruit. it's like a post on a forum of like I had these every Christmas. Does anyone know what they are? And it's like no, but I want to know. Post I'll send a picture to the Cole chat. Smallwood. I'll send a picture to the chat. Like is these things. Like he's right next to that guy from Club Tropicana. Oh, like, those that's, things. That's, that's... Yeah, I don't know what they're called. But I was like, I looked, I found the picture, and the guy's like, Does anyone know what these things are? I got them every Christmas, and it was like, Yeah, what are they? Just to clarify, you know, we all know that gingerbread men are a thing. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. like literal Christmas biscuits. It's like, I yeah, of course. Like, I, like, I consider there. gingerbread houses to be more Christmassy than gingerbread men. I mean, the house is more of a Christmas effort, yeah, but like, I, I normally only really eat gingerbread towards Christmas time. I have to bring up the Chris Tingle. Because I wrote, my ex was American, and I remember when I told about a Chris Tingle, and she fucking lost her shit. Because she couldn't believe what a Chris Tingle was. It's a candle in a in an orange with sweets on cocktail sticks stuck in it. And she's like, that's stupid. No, it's not. And I sent a picture of one and she just, every time I showed it, she burst out laughing. She's like, why do British people eat like they're still in World War II? On Christmas Eve, one of our old traditions when I was younger was to go to the local church for the Christmas Eve like ceremony thing. And it was a Chris Tingle service, but they'd pre-made them all. So they were literally about... 100 or 200 of these things lined up along these tables that you're going to get one. Last Christmas I um, I gave you my last Christmas I um, I made a Chris Tingle for one of my Bradvent shorts so I'll put that clip in for people, it's only a minute long of me making a Chris Tingle. When I was a kid, every single Christmas Eve we would always go to the Chris Tingle service up at the local church and uh, people aren't familiar with this, it's just a, a religious practice where they basically give kids oranges with sweets on them. And uh, I'm not particularly religious anymore, but, you know, this this always reminds me of Christmas, this practice of these Chris Tingles. So I'm making one for this Christmas. As you can see, very simple little design of a Chris Tingle. Oh, I need to light it. Shit. There we go. A Chris Tingle. So to make sure I don't set anything on fire like my sister did once with her hair. Ha. Uh, anyway, so time is pressing. Lucas, what is your example for us? So I think I just, you know, briefly want to mention, I think a lot of these things are probably just like, you know, a family tradition that someone gets upset that isn't being 
you know, utilized in this year's tradition or whatever. And it's like my my example of like something that my family got upset about was uh, that like you know the the crime quote unquote was that we would always get like an Indian takeaway every Christmas Eve, and that would be like the build up to Christmas Eve. We'd open like. Um, our pajamas for the night, so we have like nice fresh pajamas for the evening, and we'd get an Indian takeaway. And then um, <laughs> I remember like the first Christmas Eve that Jenna spent with our family, and she turns around and was like, "I don't like Indian food," and she she doesn't she, at least at the time uh, didn't eat any Indian food at all, like no curries, nothing. Just and all my family were like. Get rid. get rid. What? <laughs> what Lucas, get rid. Like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> she'll, like, we she'll have never to have an Indian in the Holland household. Yeah, and it was like all my family just like went into like broken mode of like <laughs> they couldn't understand. <laughs> but we get an Indian on Christmas Eve. That's what we do. So, but we could get Chinese this year. <laughs> we get, we no. get Indian. <laughs> <laughs> so Jenna ended up having like a papadom and chips. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah. yeah. But it was just like the the entire family just shut down of like that's that's not what happens. And you were never allowed home again. Yeah, and I never spoke to my family ever again. <laughs> it's just yeah, that was just that weird moment for me of like, okay, but is it really that big a deal? Like, isn't the point of like spending time with each other and the takeaway is so that we can like have a nice relaxing even no, we get Indian food. My favourite thing about Christmas is when people are like, well, does it really matter? It's like, yes, it does. <laughs> That's what this whole discussion's about. <laughs> Isn't it about family time together and, like, appreciating one another and spreading the love? No, fuck you. <laughs> I've mentioned before that I have a family Christmas earlier than the 25th now, just for convenience. Like, it's easier to travel and everybody can get together because they're not doing other things around that time. Uh, you can get all your Christmas shopping done early before all the rushes are in, etc., and um, I put a video out, another one of those Bradvent shorts. I put one out saying it was a good idea, like people should do this. And people weren't happy. Like they were like, "No, you can't. You have to have it on the twenty fifth." It's like, well, I get it if you're religious. They were like, "We're not religious. You just can't do that. You just can't do that. It has to be the twenty fifth." It's like it's just a day. If you do it any time in December, the, all the decorations are up, all the shopping, the foods and stuffs there. It's just easier. I've, I've sent another Christmas staple to the chat. Oh, God's sake. If you want to appreciate, it. like this is a staple of a Smallwood household. Do you appreciate the cheese and the oh, oh yeah, no. we make those. Oh, we make oh, the, the we cheese made those, yes. The shitty pickled onions yeah, on made. them. Why does it go googly eyes on it? Because it does. Because it's a hedgehog. hedgehog. Okay, so it's it's a quote unquote hedgehog, and it's, it's not quote unquote. Look, okay, it's the most. Hedgehog it's not a seen. real hedgehog. Carl. It's such hedgehog. Um. So Carl grabs a real life hedgehog from out of the garden, covers it in Christmas foil. It's Christmas foil. Um. It's just foil. Um, and then skewers it with a load of cocktail sticks and sticks cheese and pickled onions on the cocktail sticks. Again, because it was my um, ex-girlfriend was American. She's like, oh, at Christmas, you have a cheese board? And I went, no, we had a cheese hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, the That's fuck's real? a cheese? She's like, well, we couldn't afford more than one cheese, so we just had a cheese hedgehog where you get... Which you think about it, it's basically just a cheese board, but you've only got one kind of cheese. We've got a sausage tree. There's... um. There's those little plastic trees you can get where you slot them up and they're like, it's like this plastic tree that stands on the table and it's got like the little spines on it. You can put things on them like food to serve them in tree form. So we always had cocktail sausages on the sausage tree and that was that went alongside the hedgehog of cheese. They're, they're like my favourite sort of snack, especially because we have, we have a Christmas dinner and then you have to have a buffet in the evening. You've got to have the that, buffet, yeah. That, I, I the little the sausage idea. rolls. And those are just like... Yeah. Our buffet is Christmas Eve. So like when Lucas has his tradition of the Indian food, ours is a family buffet. Well, that's the thing then. What do you think is like the quintessential British buffet food then for like British Christmas? Because like, for me, it's got to be um, uh, miniature sausage rolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mini sausage, well, mini, I, I, yes. mini sausage rolls and then mini cheese rolls. I was going to say like the mini cocktail sausages that are like 12% meat and not actual sausages. And they're just like horrible grit and people are like, no, let's get these Christmas so cocktail sausages. Like, no. I mean, you've got to have crisps, but you can't have brand name crisps. It has to be like frisps <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. My mum, because she insists on being a little bit fancy, so she always makes quiche. And I hate quiche. And do you know what I hate more than quiche? 
cheap quiche. <laughs> Do you know, what, you, know, know. you cut it and it starts sliding off the pastry oh. immediately. Like, oh, no. But every year, my mum serves a quiche. It's like, this one's really nice. Cost me eight quid, this did. And I went, you could have bought eight bags of crisps. You could have got, you could have got eight, you got, could have got 24 pack of crisps. Oh, God. The th- I always find it really funny when you show, like, the British buffet food to people from... Like, I've got a friend from Sweden. The American <laughs> mind can't comprehend that much brown. I've got I've got a friend from Sweden. I showed her a picture of this this table that was covered in the uh, this British party food, and it was just a table of beige. And they were like, "What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Why would you eat that? That's meant to be hangover food. That's not for parties." <laughs> beige. O- on that note, Carl, let's uh, let's move over to you. What's your crime? Well, the crime for like uh, in my family at least is um, well, someone very religious. Not in that sense, what I know, just this religiously celebrates Christmas. Like it's a very specific way. And if you do it any other way but the way that she says, like she gets very annoyed. So for example, like the decorations go up on the first and they go down on the thirty first. She's like, Yeah, I think it's pretty common. But with my mum, it's like you have to help her put up the tree, but then you'll do it and then she'll tell you've done it wrong. <laughs> always. Always do it wrong. And if you've got a Christmas card, you have to get a nice one. Even though it's like Gustav on the Thelf. And every year, I leave the um, all the price tags on my Christmas cards. So, you know, it costs me 20p. <laughs> and every year, my mum opens my letters and she takes that off and puts the thing back on. Because she knows I've done it. Because you can't do that. You can't let people know how much you spent on them. So, like, my Christmas is just me trying to annoy my mum. Like, uh, for example, as well. She puts chocolate out. But you're not asked to eat that chocolate. That's the, that's the tree chocolate. Because she put chocolate on the trees. And that's the tree chocolate. And ever since we were a kid... Me and my brother were like, we'd have to put the chocolate on the tree. I said, can we have one, Mum? I said, no, it's the tree chocolate. <laughs> the it's tree like, chocolate's there to be eaten. They're forbidden like, chocolate. No, you're not allowed to eat it because if you <laughs> take it off, then there'd then be a gap on the tree. Yeah, I got I got told off for the exact same by my mum. It's like, you don't eat the chocolates on the tree. It's like, put the chocolate on a tree. But the point of them being there is that you can eat them. That's why they exist. Otherwise, you just put bauble on the tree. And here's the thing as well with my mum, of like literally every inch of the tree. Is covered, so she'll know when it's missing. So if you try and take, she knows. And it became a game where me and my brother we figured out how to open the tree chocolate and then put the foil back together and then hang that back on the tree. Yeah, I know the exact. Same. <laughs> or when you're like hanging on the tree chocolates, you put them behind the tree. So as, even now, when I go home, I'll like text some tree chocolates and I'll put them behind the tree so my mum doesn't know. I'll move stuff around so she don't notice. And then like in the evening when she's there having like a like evening coffee because my mum drinks coffee before bed like a weirdo I just go oh it's really nice that and I'll whip out the chocolate and she's like where'd you get that from and she'll look for the tree and where it is because you're not allowed to eat the tree chocolates that that baffles me the idea that there's people who buy tree chocolates not to eat like that's the imagine doing it in a house with three kids otherwise you would buy a bauble Mm -hmm. like there's decorations that aren't eaten three kids who don't (laughs) get like sweets and then putting chocolate on the tree and telling the kids they're not allowed it fuck me that was my household too, and then it was a like, well. When we take the tree down, you can have all the chocolates. Like, I'll be, I'll be, that'll be after Christmas. Nisha, were you allowed to eat tree chocolates? Uh, I don't even know if we had any. I think we just had baubles and tinsel. <laughs> just eat them. Here's a debate I had with my mum about uh, tree decorating. Actually, so I told her that I think that the way you meant to decorate a tree is to put the tinsel on, then the baubles, because you took the tinsel into it and then you hang the baubles over the top. She said, no, you put the baubles on first and then wrap the tinsel around the whole thing. No, what you do is you pick up the tree by the base and you spin it around. <laughs> that's what I did once. My mum got so mad. Like, that's not how it's done. But it's quicker my way. I actually have a video of me and my mum decorating the, our Christmas tree by throwing the stuff across the room. So I did it for a funny video idea like a couple of years back. And we had, a, we had great fun doing that. And afterwards, the tree looks like an absolute state. Like It's just covered in uh, tinsel that's just hanging half off it. Before we redecorated it, we put it, we pushed it into the corner and left it. When my sister came around later and walked in, she was like, what's going on with the tree? <laughs> That's like the other one as well. Like presents have to be set out a certain way. So when I go home, I'll take the presents and I'll, I'll give them a squeeze and I'll move them around. And she hates that. So I do it every time. Because that's Christmas. No offense to your mum. I, I, she sounds like a lovely person generally, but she sounds like she makes Christmas not fun. <laughs> no, it's that thing of it's because it's a game now. Of Me and my brothers always try and mess with her about it. Of like... She'll say like stuff like you have to get me a nice looking Christmas card. So we have a game and get the most garish one possible. <laughs> uh, and I always get like one of the giant ones that's like this big. And then I'll like, I love my mummy and I'll write on it in permanent marker with my left hand. 
<laughs> and she's got to put it on display because obviously it's a Christmas card from me, but it's like this ginormous <laughs> card that has nowhere to go. But she has to put it up because she won't not. It's the same thing about like presents as well. The more I wrap them and I cover them in like duct tape and electrical <laughs> tape and I write them in permanent mark on my left hand. It's like, who's, you're not putting my present under the tree? So no, she puts it at the back and I go, Mom, do you not love me? <laughs> Do you know what my present at the front of the tree? She has to put it at the front, and I know she hates it. Oh, my God. So if I'm, like, home for Christmas, I always, like, it's a tradition for me to go out for, like, you know, a drink with my friends on Christmas Eve because it's, like, one of the few times of the year I can see them. And just, like, I know like, I came in once too late, and I had to be Santa. It's like, that's the thing of, like, now I'm old enough, I got roped in, so like, I actually, went, well, you've been out, you've got to chew the carrot. You've got to chew the carrot, <laughs> and you've got to start Rudolph being outside. You know, chew the carrot. You've got to oh, take, take a bite out of the mince pies because apparently... No, I'm not allowed to do that. You're not allowed I'm not allowed pies. to have a bit of the mince pie. That's oh. still um, uh, um, uh, the man of the household's job and I'm not the man of the household. Why are you having some of the carrot and the mince pie? Like, you meant to leave them out for Rudolph. Yeah, like, Rudolph yeah, came and ate some carrot. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, why are you eating the carrot then, Carl? Yeah, that's true, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit confused yeah, Rudolph, but why are you eating Rudolph's, Rudolph's, Rudolph's carrot? carrot? That's yeah. a bit rude. <laughs> So Anisha, we'll move on to you now. Have you got what's your example? What have you got for us? Um, well, like I said previously, like they, we didn't have many rules. Like I can't think of anything where someone, like in the family, was annoyed at, at us for any reason. But there's something like um, that. I, I don't know if it's a crime. It's just something like a disagreement, I guess. Where um, so Adam's family. Um, so if anyone doesn't know Adam's my other half. Um, he, his family had a tradition of opening one present Christmas Eve. And mine didn't. I like to open everything on Christmas Day. I like the excitement of not, you know, not, not opening things till Christmas morning. So when we, because we have a Christmas together, we, because we don't, we spend Christmas separate families. So we have our own little Christmas together. And on the eve of that Christmas, he'd be like, let's open a present. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. And he's like, but it's tradition. Like, but it's not for me. And it's like, yeah, but but just open a present. Just open a present. Like, I don't want to. And I don't, I'm just, I end up opening a present because I'm just like, fine. So we, we <laughs> sure. open a present each. Yeah, basically. But it's one of those things where it's like, well, it's not my tradition, but it is yours. So it's like, how do we compromise? Do we open half a present? I had the exact same conversation because my family always did, like, I say, the pyjamas, but also, like, one little gift on Christmas Eve. And it was usually, like, you know, from, like, a family friend or something so it was like a, a small gift just like something that costs like a fiver or something but jenna never did that so like i had to then compromise and eventually the the discussion came down to like compromising on we do a stocking filler present on christmas eve rather than like a proper present it's just like we, we have the little traditions where we have the, like i said the christmas dinner and then in the evening we have a, a buffet and we have to play games we have to play cheesy games and then now that we're older, obviously we we'll get drunk while playing these games. But <laughs> the one that always comes out is prosecco pong. That is so lethal, but it's so fun. We always get out the um, like the trivia quiz cards as well. Um, and it's always like my mum always as well um, goes on YouTube and does the music quizzes. And it's like guess that song. And then there's always like a really crap game ball. And I think the one that we laugh the hardest at is I've sent it to the group chat. It's Doggy Do. Doggy Do. Which is oh, where you've got to feed the dog. Do. You feed the dog. And then you've got to like walk it by squeezing it. It's like basically it's just an air pump. And you squeeze it. And then if the dog poos, then you lose. But it's more the fact that the noise it makes. Because you know, like when you squeeze like that weird gel between your hands. And I just remember once where we did it. And we just we pressed the squeeze. And it like the the whatever the material is, like the weird, like, um, soft Play-Doh site stuff got stuck in the like the plastic dog's bum holes. Like, <laughs> and we just could not stop laughing. Like, we could not, like, and then just remember just, like, my sister going, bang, and the poo flew out and splattered against the wall, and we just could <laughs> not stop laughing. It was, like, best five we ever spent. And they're all great, yeah. It's, like, the, the, the best thing about Christmas is, like, all playing the dumb games. I think it's, uh, it's nice and fitting for our Christmas focus that this hasn't really turned into too much of a, like, people being arseholes kind of thing it's just clearly everybody has their very set traditions and people don't like it when you go outside those traditions because it like like what we've said many times it doesn't feel like christmas unless you're doing a certain thing but i, I would imagine that there's going to be people watching this who have proper examples of times when things have got bad or arguments are fully broken out because something is being done or not done that's not christmassy 
I mean, I've had plenty of examples, like, when I, you know, working in restaurants and stuff where, like, customers were being assholes about certain things being, like, the wrong thing for Christmas. Like, for example, in Nando's, we got a lot of complaints because, like, we weren't playing Christmas songs, but we had a Nando's Christmas playlist on instead. Who was going to complain when one place out of everywhere you've been to <laughs> isn't playing Christmas songs? A lot of people. So I was thought you were going to say they're going to say like they're not serving turkey. And it's like we kind of have a, a theme here, <laughs> like spicy that, turkey. That's the thing. Even one, even one year they did a peri peri gravy, and like people fucking loved it. And it's like they even went to that length of like, okay, we'll give you gravy to like, so you can have like mash and gravy with your chicken on the side, like feel a bit more Christmassy, and like even then people can. Well, how dare like you not conform to our British ways of doing Christmas? It's like god damn it. The thing is, it's always the people like that as well who have the shittest Christmas. I like sent the picture like the, the cheese hedgehog earlier, and I know that's crap. I'm not going to tell someone that. I'm not going to go to Nando and say, "Where's my cheese hedgehog?" <laughs> you should though. I should. <laughs> I don't. I don't see a cheese hedgehog on the menu. Where's my cheese hedgehog? And people do get they get very um, upset like their Christmas traditions are not being upheld, even though like their Christmas traditions are very personal to them. Yeah, I think that's another thing that uh, would be nice to hear in the comment section as well. So like, I want examples from people of the. Uh, like the kind of crimes that you you were aware of, but also traditions. Like, does anybody have an interesting Christmas tradition that's outside of the norm? Because a lot of people have like, oh, that we do this thing on Christmas Eve. We have this rule about what we eat here or what we do there. But I want like the, the weird ones, like ones where someone's like, oh, for some reason our tradition is just that, like, we all have to jump down the the bottom two steps in the morning for some reason like i want the ones where it's like they're just a really weird thing that people just do because it's because it's tradition there's no real reason except it's just a, it's people just go it. to church who freak me out like, i'll watch the queen's speech because that's the pop one we didn't even mention of like i just remember like um hearing from a friend where it's like i've got to watch the queen's speech and their parents would get legit mad if they didn't stand up during the queen's speech and just one year they went the queen sat down and they got slapped. They're like they're like fully grown adult, and their parents like you stand up during the Queen's speech. Like she sat down, <laughs> lazy bin. She's not even. You know, it's not live, right? She recorded this last week. I I do remember one time um, we did like prank my sister's boyfriend um, because he was like coming. Um, I think he was like maybe it was like after work or something. I can't remember, but he was coming in to Christmas Day in the evening. And we all were like a few drinks in and decided like, okay, when he comes in, we'll be like, now that everyone's finally here, we're going to do like the family prayer. <laughs> and like, there was like 15, 20 of us that all like legitimately <laughs> stood, held hands in a circle and then started reading the prayer. And then like someone like palmed it off to him and was like, oh, would you like to finish the prayer? Would you? <laughs> As like part of the Christmas tradition. And he's like... What the fuck is going on? There's that great one of them where it's that uh, guy is like, yeah, my wife's really nervous. And the first time she met all my family, um, I stood up at the end of the meal and said, now my wife would like to sing you all a song. <laughs> he said oh, she's not forgiving me yet, but it was oh, so worth it. Me. That's like, that's a Christian, like, um, when people meet your family at Christmas for the first time, it's tradition. You've got to give them the trial by fire, aren't you? <laughs> mm. So you've not like, you got to play board games and not explain the rules or the house rules, for example. Sure, another tradition which I probably think is quite common is that everyone except, I guess, me or the youngest person in the house falls asleep at like 2 pm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> everyone just falls asleep. I mean, that's my tradition now when I'm an adult <laughs> because I'm still the excited, still the excited kid inside that gets up at like 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm. But as you say, like Christmas Eve, now you're an adult, probably, at, you know, seeing friends or family, having a few drinks. But then I'm too excited to go to bed for Christmas. So I'm going to bed, like, after a few drinks, getting, like, an hour's sleep, waking up for Christmas, going, like, presents, 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 <laughs> doing presents, and then being like, all right, back to bed then. I'll see you at, like, midday. See, I refuse to have a nap because I'm like, I want to make the most of the entire day. So I stay awake from, like, 7 till, like, 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm just I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to get those, those Christmas classics on. Bit wrong so watch, yeah, bit of watch the holiday. Watch the, the holiday. Best. Oh, that's that's one. I know my mum did this recently because she watches Hallmark movies. And um, her new fiance has got a young son, and he walked in, and he didn't know that oh, my mum's watching her Christmas movies. He walked in, and he turned it off, and she like went, "Do not turn off my Christmas movies." <laughs> like she loves those like those Hallmark ones. I'm like, he, she's you mean, a big time lawyer. Exact same plot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she loves those. 
and she just watches them on repeat all Christmas, and like <laughs> you do not turn off her Christmas movies. So that about wraps up our festive focus. Uh, thank you again to everybody for joining us for this. And uh, before we close off, we just got to do what we always do with these focuses, and that's give a shout out to our patrons on our VIP tier, as well as giving credit to those on the supporter tier. We really forgot. So uh, without further ado, I'll begin. So a big thank you to Freddy HG37, Benjamin Fridman, Sarah Paul, Shea Pinder, Lachlan Smith, Aero QC, Robert Robert, Kynan Plays Games, Binger, Popsicle Tart, Brina Lawless, and Hanan DOA Argov. So I've just noticed while editing this that I missed out Rotoscope, so here is a special shout out just for you. And then a thank you from me to Sam Bartram, Fiora Lily, Amy Brundridge, Thani Seed Al Ramathi, Umbrella Otano, Michelle Holloman, Aaron Clausen, Seed Hebad, Lyndon B. Johnson, Kathleen Lynch, Jacob Ersenbach, and Cal Tessa. And I would like to wish, to quote The Simpsons here, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Quasi Kwanzaa, a Tip Top Tet, and a Solemn Dignified Ramadan to Anna Goo, Stefan Skylar Wolf. That's a Silver Wolf? That's a name, not Skylar, Silver Wolf. JS, Onyxia. Sloan Rockefeller. Dog Schnoogly. Doogly Schnoogly. Doogly Schnoogly. They should be playing Doggy Doo a bit of Doogly Schnoogly. Tyler Mason. Bubba P. Eric Toledo. Michael Garvati. Darth Turkey 28. The 28th of the Darth Turkeys. Chibisa Matawere. And last but certainly not least for me, Harrison Rock. Cheers. And finally, a big thank you to Berriot and Uranus, Richard Chisenhall, Nesta Aylman, Jubjub366, Kester Stutz, Sean Watson, My Shoes Hurt 69, Ian Lurs, The Boy Lambert, MP, Zaren King, and James Martin. There we go. So I guess there's nothing left to do but say happy holidays to everyone watching. I think Carl summed it up pretty well in his bit. Happy everything, yeah. whatever <laughs> well. you're doing. Yes. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you in the new year. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Big waves. I'll do the Queen's wave. <laughs>